Have you been a victim of a slow website? Are you tired of your hosting company blaming your theme, blaming your plugin, vice versa? You know, guys, I'll be honest. You know, when I first started WordPress, my website was slow and, you know, I, I blamed everybody. I said, no, it's the theme, it's the plugin. And, you know, a lot of it was me. I just didn't really want to admit it. Part of it was the hosting, but, uh, you know, since then I've, I've upgraded my hosting. But today I'll give you guys 10 solid rules to follow that I guarantee you will speed up your WordPress website. So as you guys watch this video, go ahead and test some of these methods and I promise your website will be faster. Let's go ahead and check out the top 10 methods on how to improve your website speed. Number one, keep your website under three megabytes. In 2017, the average page size of a web page was 3 MB. In 2021, the average page size was 4 MB. Many new users who are creating websites tend to blame the hosting, themes, or plugins that cause their website to be slow. This is usually not the case. However, making sure you have a slim website so there's not too much to load can really help increase the speed of your overall website. The web page is a combination of many things, the contents, the images, CSS, and even JavaScript. A great way to test this is Pingdom. With Pingdom, you can run your website through a speed testing monitor. This will tell you how much of the web page is images, scripts, JavaScript, and CSS. Just remember, the slimmer the web page, the faster the page will load. If you do have web pages above three megabytes, I would advise to reduce it as much as possible and try aiming for anything lower than three megabytes to have a fast loading website. Number two, don't cut corners and get reliable web hosting. Web hosting is the backbone of your website. Many new users tend to use shared hosting, which is the slowest form of web hosting available. Five years ago, shared hosting was the cheapest hosting around. However, times have changed and cloud hosting is now becoming quickly affordable, making it a great option for web hosting. Cloud hosting is ideal because you're not sharing all of your resources with your next door neighbor and there are multiple servers constantly working on your website with cloud hosting. But for now, I would definitely say cloud hosting is the optimal hosting for your WordPress website. I personally recommend Name Hero for the best cloud hosting. All my sites load at under one second with Name Hero and I can get a year hosting for under $100. I do have a special 73% discount code off Name Hero's plans, and I will leave that discount in the description below of this video. There are other hosting options like dedicated hosting, managed cloud hosting, and VPS hosting. And I do cover a lot of these different type of web hostings in my Web Hosting Explained video, and I'll leave that video in the description below of this video. Number three, optimize your images. Most users tend to find images on the internet and immediately upload them to their website and just slap them on their page. The problem with these images, they are not optimized and are usually quite massive. In fact, if you do buy images from Shutterstock or a premium service, these image sizes can range anywhere between two megabytes to 10 megabytes, depending on the quality of the image. When you put in images to your website, you wanna make sure they are under 100 kilobytes. 100 kilobytes is a decent size for an image on your web page, but if you can get it lower, that's even better. Here are some quick rules. Rule number one. Make sure your images do not go above 100 kilobytes for fast load times. Number two, try and avoid PNG files and stick with JPEG. JPEG images are by default usually smaller and easier to load. Number three, shrink your images. You can use free resources like tinyjpeg.com and this will convert your images from PNGs to JPEG and it'll also reduce the image size of your images by up to 90%. You don't need to be a Photoshop master or know any techniques. This website will do everything for you for free. I would highly recommend putting every image through TinyJPEG before you upload it to your WordPress website for optimal performance speed. Number four, the 10 plugin rule. Beginners love to add plugins. In fact, when I started using WordPress, I used about 20 to 30 plugins on my WordPress website and noticed my website was inoperable. I'll keep this simple. By adding in too many plugins on your website, it will slow it down, especially if your website is on a shared hosting plan. Quite frankly, if you're adding too many plugins to your website, you will have more problems as well. The golden rule is do not have more than 10 to 12 plugins on your website. Anything more than this, you may see a decrease in performance speed. However, this is not the case for every single website on the internet. If you are using strong hosting like dedicated servers, then more plugins may not have that much of a significant impact on your website speed. Think of a website like a car and plugins are weights. The more weight you add on the car, the slower it will run. This is the same example for WordPress plugins. Also remember, these plugins are the number one way your website gets hacked. It's extremely important to delete any plugins you are not using and be mindful of the plugins you install on your WordPress website. I do have another video on Sakuri, which is a security plugin, and I'll leave that video in the description below if you wanna check that out later. Number five, just add a caching plugin. First, let's talk about what a caching plugin actually does. 
A caching plugin creates a static HTML version of your website. Every time someone visits your website, your caching plugin will create a replica version of your website. Instead of actually loading everything all over again, it just creates a copy and sends it to your visitors. To make this easier to understand, a caching plugin creates copies of your website so your server does not have to reload your website every single time a visitor comes to your web page. I personally use WP Rocket on my website. It not only helps me cache my website, but it minimizes CSS and JavaScript. It also offers lazy load to help reduce the strain on my server. Number six, reduce the amount of JavaScript and CSS you use on your website. The beginner's biggest mistake is adding flashy animations to your website. A great example is Slider Revolution. I know these plugins look really awesome. Sometimes you can create some beautiful animations and styles with these plugins. Just keep in mind, these flashy animations are usually created by JavaScript. So having too much JavaScript or CSS on your website will increase the amount of server requests, resulting in slower load times. Number seven, reduce requests. A server request is when a browser sends a request to your WordPress website server in order to get information on what is on your website. So the fewer requests a website has to make, the faster the server will load. But what causes server requests? Number one, too many plugins can cause too many server requests. Number two, too many images on your website will also lead to many requests. Number three, JavaScript. If you have too much JavaScript on your website, this will cause more server requests on your server. Try to keep your website requests under 80 for optimal performance. You can use Pingdom to test how many requests your website is sending. Number eight, add lazy load to your website. It really does help. The term itself sounds slow, but it actually helps you speed up your website. Lazy load allows your website to only load images when a user scrolls down to that specific image. For example, if you visit a website and you don't scroll down, the website will not load the images below the user because there is no need to because the user never scrolled down. By not loading the images the user never sees, this can drastically help speed up the performance of your website. WP Rocket, the caching plugin I recommend, does also offer this feature inside of the plugin. It's a premium plugin, but to be honest, it does everything that you need to have an optimal performing website. So try to implement this feature on your website for faster load times. And number nine, use a CDN. A CDN stands for a content delivery network and is a variety of distributed servers all around the world that source files accessed by website visitors. Basically, a CDN creates replica versions of your website and spreads them all around the world to other servers. As a result, users around the world do not have to access your specific server in your region. Instead, they can access servers located to their region, reducing the physical distance it takes them to reach your server. For example, let's say you have a web visitor in Brazil and he's trying to access a web server in Singapore. A CDN will create a replicated version of your website in a server in Brazil. This way, users in Brazil don't have to access your web server all the way in Singapore, but can access it locally connecting to a server in the region. CDN is more specifically for websites that have a global reach like large blogs or large e-commerce websites. But by adding a CDN, it can help speed up the total time it takes for a user to access your website. And lastly, number 10, check your server settings. One common mistake I see all the time is beginners tend to update their version of PHP to the highest version. However, this can cause catastrophic events on your website. For example, some themes and plugins may not be compatible with the newer versions of PHP, causing them to break or malfunction. Many new versions of PHP always tend to be faster and more efficient, but that's not always the case. So when you are adjusting the PHP version, always leave it to the recommended version by your web host. Here's another tip. Almost all page builders today require high memory limit. Adjusting your memory limit to 256 or better usually leads to better performing plugins. Another option you might wanna configure is upload max file size. I personally leave mine around 16 megabytes. This means any file larger than 16 megabytes cannot be uploaded to my WordPress website. If you're not sure about server configurations, always ask your web posts and to see if they can point you in the right direction. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. You know, when I got started with WordPress, like we all did, I was like, man, my website's slow. It's everyone else's fault, you know? And I blamed everybody. I blamed the theme, I blamed the hosting company. And you know, if I just practiced some of these optimization tips, my, my site would have been way better. I mean, I think I first signed up with HostGator and my website page on average was 10 megabytes. And I'm like, what the heck, what's going on? You know, I blamed, <laughs> I blamed HostGator. I, I mean, I don't like, I'm a no fan of HostGator. I think they're terrible, but uh, it was really my fault, you know? But some plugins do cause your website to be slow. Like for example, I did use WordFence. I really found that disabling that plugin really helped speed up my websites, you know? Also, a uh, Slider Revolution, that was also another really heavy plugin. If you guys do use heavy plugins, try to use really solid web hosting. 
Uh, like web hosting is the backbone of your website. It's not just some like, oh yeah, it's just this little web hosting. It's like, no, like that's the heartbeat of your website. Like that's how it breathes, you know? So make sure you guys do have reliable web hosting. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if this video helped you guys out. And if you guys, you know, have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And I'll see all of you party people in the next video, guys. Take care.